Hello friends, welcome to another episode by Engineering Today and we're back with some interesting space updates again. First, we'll start with SpaceX to attempt Starship booster catch during first orbital launch. Then we'll wrap up with an update where Elon Musk and everyday astronaut share detailed tour of SpaceX Raptor 2 engine. Let's start with our first update today. Insights about SpaceX's strategy for the first Starship booster capture attempt have been made public in an updated document that the corporation submitted to the U.S. Federal Communications Commission FCC. The document is a follow-up to a different batch that SpaceX submitted in June 2021 when the firm described its plans for Starship's orbital launch debut in background and asked the FCC for authorization to utilize Starlink dishes for in-flight telemetry. Even if all went according to plan, Starship would not fully reach orbit on its first attempt at spaceflight, according to a different request made a month earlier for more conventional telemetry antennas. Furthermore, it implied that SpaceX had no plans to recover the super-heavy rocket or upper stage used for Starship's flight debut. Twelve months later, SpaceX has resubmitted their request for authorization to employ multiple Starlink dishes on both stages along with an updated description of Starship's orbital launch debut. While the majority of the text remains unchanged, some specifics regarding Super Heavy's contribution to the mission have altered. This time around, according to SpaceX, the Super Heavy booster will separate, perform a partial return, and land in the Gulf of Mexico or return to Starbase and be caught by the launch tower. Prior to this document, SpaceX's best-case plans for the first Super Heavy booster to launch never deviated from a controlled splashdown in the Gulf of Mexico, potentially showing that it would be safe to attempt booster recovery on the following launch, but virtually ensuring that the first booster would be lost at sea. One year later, SpaceX seems a little more assured and wants to give itself the chance to try to recover the first Super Heavy rocket that launches. But the company has made it significantly more difficult to test early Super Heavy and Starship recovery and thus reuse by completely removing conventional and predictable landing legs and designing its most recent prototypes so that the only way they can be recovered in one piece is with a huge mechanized launch tower known as Mechazilla. Every aspect of orbital Starship launches will be significantly influenced by the launch tower and its three movable arms. A more unusual pair of arms, known as chopsticks, performs a more difficult task in addition to employing the chopsticks to hoist, stack, and demate starships and super-heavy rockets in virtually any type of weather or wind. SpaceX also plans to use them as a very intricate and perilous rocket recovery system. For a booster or starship capture, the rocket will approach the tower, enter the space between the splayed arms, hover in place as the arms close around it and eventually come to rest on hard points that look to offer roughly as much surface area as a coffee table. According to a simulation of the procedure demonstrated by Elon Musk, calling it a catch is a misnomer because the arms will mostly move in one dimension and can't genuinely grab the rocket in any meaningful sense. They are more akin to a compact permanent landing platform that can make slight last-second positioning modifications as developed and demonstrated. Eventually, the chopsticks might shorten the time required for post-recovery processing by doing away with the need for a crane or the same arms to attach to a landed booster or ship. However, all interplanetary ships would still need legs so they may reduce the dry mass needed for those as well. They will, however, inevitably make it difficult to demonstrate their own effectiveness. The current recovery mechanisms on the arms and the landing hardpoints on ships and boosters appear to indicate that a catch could fail if either stage is more than a foot or two away from a perfect bullseye or rotated a few degrees in the wrong direction. With the system SpaceX has developed, 
Even the smallest mistake could easily result in a huge, pressurized, partially fueled rocket smashing the chopsticks and falling a few hundred feet to the earth, ensuring an explosion that may harm nearby infrastructure or ignite flames that would. As we are already aware, during the most recent round of testing, a SpaceX Super Heavy Booster 7 experienced a significant explosion and numerous fires at the launch pad. Thankfully, B-7 Raptor nozzles appear to be intact after the incident. The launch tower could also be accidentally hit by Starship or Super Heavy during a landing attempt in the case of greater anomalies, which would result in damage to or complete destruction of the skyscraper-sized structure. The corporation will ultimately need to exercise extreme caution and use a lot of ships and boosters to avoid making its lone Starship launch tower inoperable due to the enormous risk posed by any catch attempt, barring a miraculous improvement in the design of everything involved on its first try. SpaceX is probably aware of this, at least to some level, and Super Heavy would probably need to be in immaculate condition and execute flawlessly during the ascent and boost back phases of its launch debut in order to be approved for a capture attempt. The maiden orbital launch of Starship might wind up being even more of a show than it already is. Let's move on to the second update for today. The 39 improved Raptor engines that SpaceX needs to launch its completely reusable Starship rocket into orbit for the first time have almost all been installed, according to photographs the company shared on Twitter a few days ago. A new Starship prototype called Ship 24 and a Super Heavy booster called Booster 7 are both intended to use the engines. They'll launch simultaneously into orbit this summer, pending the outcome of upcoming testing. For the aircraft manufacturer, it's an exciting time, which YouTuber Everyday Astronaut caught in a recent video that was posted on Saturday and features SpaceX CEO Elon Musk outlining how the Raptor engines function. The Everyday Astronaut, Tim Dodd, was given a thorough tour of SpaceX's Raptor 2 engine by Elon Musk. It was a beautiful Saturday and a perfect time for the latest installment of the Everyday Astronauts conversation with Elon Musk to be released. The final segment of Tim Dodd's video conversation with the CEO and founder of SpaceX was published earlier that day. This video focuses solely on the new engine and delves deeply into the technical aspects. Elon Musk provided various details about the new engine, including how it differs from Raptor 1. Elon Musk refers to the Raptor 1 in the video as a crazy Christmas tree, and one of them even has a painting of a snowman on it. It's not super easy to see, but you can compare how much less there is if you just look at, just eyeball the fiddly bits level there versus the fiddly bits level there, Elon Musk mentioned as he pointed at the Raptors 1 and 2. The Raptor 1 engine is much more heavily encased in material than the later engine. It was a finished engine, Elon noted, and a significant number of items had been removed for Raptor 2. A massive amount of things have been deleted, deleted, combined, simplified on Raptor 2 versus Raptor 1. The Raptor 2 looks like it's not finished, but it actually is. Tim Todd was also given information by Elon Musk about thrust, chamber pressure, melting engines, cooling, swirl injectors, simplicity, and a ton more. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting and kindly provide your valuable feedback in the comment section. This will help us to improve.